For many years, I've explored and experienced Bali by riding my fixed gear bicycle. For those not familiar to a fixed gear bicycle, it's a bicycle that doesn't allow coasting, and the only way to slow down is by backpedaling and do a skid stop. <laughs> I must say, it's a fun, fit, and thrilling way to explore and go the distance. When it comes to cycling, Bali has plenty to offer. From rapid changing landscapes, from diverse terrains, there are so many, yes, there are so many interesting landmarks to visit and see. One particular landmark, a very unique one, that has inspired me to go cycling is a relief of a Westerner riding his bicycle that is carved on the northern wall of a holy shrine at Madwe Karang Temple in North Bali. Yes. I did my research and I found out that this relief is attributed to Winyan Otto Jan Nieuwenkam, a versatile Dutch artist who came to Bali for the first time in 1904. Immediately after landing at Buleleng Port, Nieuwenkam went, went on his bike and started to explore the island. Going across the island, Nieuwenkam captured and documented the alluring beauties of Bali through his paintings, etchings, drawings, and written accounts. For me, the notion of the first bicycle in Bali, let alone riding one during those old days, was really fascinating. I felt a strong kinship to Nguyen Kham. I needed to unearth the message immortalized by our forefathers in North Bali. How could such a secular object, a bicycle, be in such a second setting of a temple? Was it simply the creativity of the Balinese artisans responding to a strange sight of a Westerner riding his bicycle? Or was it a token of appreciation to the intimate relation between the Balinese and Nguyen Kham during the old times? Or, yes, or did Nguyen Kham deliberately commission such art piece foreseeing that it would be a unique landmark in the near future. To answer all my questions, I decided to embark my own biking adventure, retracing Nguyen Kham's track from South to North Bali. Firstly, I cycled and visited several museums in Ubud to experience Nguyen Kham's artwork and learn the features that of Bali that it mesmerized him the most. I also visited several prominent Balinese artists engaged in conversation to understand the magnitude and impact of Nguyen Kham creations to us here in Bali. Another morning ride to the coastal village of Sanur not only rewarded me with a splendid sunrise, but also a gleeful conversation about Nguyen Kham. A group of fishermen, they were surprised about the relief but they praised Nguyen Kham's drawings of traditional fishing boats that I exhibited via my mobile phone. One eager onlooker mocked me. Ne joh joh ko ne uber gus besoleh. That I was a weird youngster taking this relief issue too seriously. But all these short trips made me understand that Nguyen Kham was a gifted artist with a very keen eye for beauty. Then the day came. The first day of my trip, I started an 80-mile ride from my hometown Denpasar to Ahmed East Bali. The route was challenging, mostly uphill, and the sun was beating on me. But I never felt lonely and tired, especially when kids who never fail to say, hello, hello, keep asking me, kalki je, kalki je, where I was heading. Some of the kids were even chasing my tail you know, giving notice that it's all miles of smiles. Hours later, the dusking orange sky welcomed me at Ahmed. Before calling it a day, I went for beer with the local divers, telling them about my trip. We joke, we laugh, and we could only imagine the alluring beauties that would be sketched by Nguyen Kham if he took on scuba diving. <laughs> yeah. 
The next day, I continued my journey. I struggled again going uphill at Chulik. But Bali is full of surprises. There he was in front of me, a young man on his wheelchair, seemingly with special needs, dragging himself onwards with a radio on his lap that was so loud, you cannot figure out what was being played. Yeah. As I passed him, I nodded to him, and suddenly, out of the blue, he shouted to me, Semangat, semangat, keep going, keep going. I felt so happy for his encouragement. Then along the way to Buleleng, passing motorcycles with loud pipes and erratic honking were music to my ears. But the majestic view of Mount Agung and Mount Batur to my left and the wide open seas to my right were just priceless. A short detour in Tianyar led me into a conversation about nothing with a local man who offered me shelter from the sun and also home-brewed Balinese coffee. In the village of Kubu, I accompanied a woman walking her stag. Moving on, along the winding Tejakula roads, I passed a group of jubilant high school students that were celebrating graduation. I made a U-turn and asked them if they knew anything about New and Camp. While they were busy sparing pain to each other and preparing to go on a convoy, one student reached out for his mobile phone and started Googling new and come for me. <laughs> it's so funny how kids learn today. It's so amazing how people would join the conversation and take a break from their daily activities whenever I stop and ask them the same questions. Not much to learn, though, until I was practically in front of Madwe Karang Temple. Resting in a food stall, an old man came up to me and shouted that the relief I've been seeking is just across the street. I didn't rush straight away to the temple. I continued to listen to his story about a Dutch cartographer going back and forth along the slopes of Buleleng using his bike during the old days. The next day, I entered the main compound of Madwe Karang Temple for praying. And then, there he was, Nguyen Kam, the cyclist, Nguyen Kam, the adventurer, but more importantly, the island's most eloquent for foreign visual bard, with a fresh frangipani flower on his right ear glancing back at me. The temple priest explained to me that the relief we are seeing today is a result of a restoration done years after the 1917 earthquake that destroyed most part of the temple. Aside from giving a new set of wheels, yes, the, flower, the blossoming flower wheels, the Balinese artisans also give New and Kam a new, a new look. They remove his iconic mustache, give him the new Balinese headpiece, and also the sarong. It's such a blessing that Bali has a unique way to preserve a collective memory between past, present, and future, between Bali and Nguyen Kam. At that moment, the secular carving of a man on his bicycle became a sacred homage of peaceful interactions, artistic achievements, and mutual respect between Bali and the outside world. On a personal note, by finding you and come the cyclist, not only did I find him, but also my fellow Balinese, with their infectious laugh and generally sunny disposition toward life, but more importantly, their openness and welcoming curiosity to new things, new people, and new ideas. At the end, I reached my destination a bit slower but a lot richer in experience. To quote Nguyen Kam's motto, Fagando Aquario, I wonder I acquire. I did too, and so should you. Matur Sukhma, thank you.